In this video, I'm going to share with you why I believe property prices in the UK will rise in 2024 and beyond. So stay tuned for more. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon. We put out three videos each and every week, all dedicated to keeping you on top of your property investment game. Now, it's been a little bit of a confused uh, situation when it comes to property price predictions in 2024. At the start of the year, a lot of people were predicting some falls. In fact, just a month or two ago, Rightmove were predicting 1% fall in prices in 2024. Zoopla were predicting 2% falls, uh, with only Knight Frank out there predicting a small rise. And the reason for that is because when you make predictions, what you're doing is you're taking the best available data at that specific time and then extrapolating that over the period to follow to try to make a guess as to what could happen. Now, since a couple of months ago, when people made those predictions of small drops in property prices, some major movements have happened, and those have been with regards to inflation data in the UK. Now, inflation, of course, is the rate at which uh, goods and services are increasing in price. And that reached all-time highs, that reached double-digit figures, and that led to the Bank of England having to put up interest rates to basically cool things down, to dampen things down, to suck money out of the economy so that inflation is brought back under control. Now, one of the biggest factors influencing inflation in the UK has been the cost of energy, that's gas, electricity. Now, the interesting thing about energy prices in the UK is that they're actually falling. So it's not the rate of increase that's falling, but the actual uh, price is falling. And that is going to have a massive effect on inflation. In fact, Andrew Bailey from the Bank of England is predicting that in the next couple of months, the UK is going to come within spitting distance of the Bank of England's target rate for inflation, which is 2%. And that is big, big news for interest rates, because interest rates are at the moment 5%. 0.25% and the next Bank of England committee meeting to set these interest rates takes place on 9th of May. Now what's long been the norm is that the Bank of England, yes they look at the UK data but they also take a massive signal from what's happening across the pond and what the Fed is doing with US interest rates. Now, in the US of A, they have been successful in tackling their own inflation, but in the UK, they've actually been more successful in tackling and bringing down that rate uh, of inflation to target levels. So here's the interesting thing. Andrew Bailey, a few days ago, made some comments where he suggested that on the strength of the UK data alone, if we're within spitting distance of that 2%, which most analysts predict that we will be as far as UK inflation goes. Andrew Bailey has said that he will be, or they will be looking at UK data alone rather than take a cue from what's happening over at the uh, Federal Reserve. And that is a very, very strong indication that on the 9th of May, we may see our first drop in UK interest rates. Now, interest rates are not going to go back to what they were a few years ago, but they certainly will come off the boil from their current 5.25% and settle a good half a percentage point lower than what they are now. But this, these cuts will come in stages, of course. So what does all that mean for house prices? By the way, before I get onto that, let me just tell you about the Baker Street property meet, which we have on Tuesday 30th of April. The Baker Street property meet is, of course, the UK's largest property investors networking meeting, where 300 property investors gather to network and talk all things property. It takes place in central London. Uh, tickets are available at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com. So see you guys there. So what does all this mean for property prices? So, this unexpected fall, rate of fall in inflation to spitting distance of the Bank of England target means there now is headroom to move on interest rate cutting. We already have a massive structural issue in the UK where there's a serious supply demand imbalance between housing supply and housing demand. You can see from this graph of um, analysis of major developed countries. And what this shows is uh, housing stock 
per thousand head of population. Now, uh, we come below France, Germany, Japan. We have the lowest ha uh, number of homes per thousand head of population. Now, of course, the government's own target is 300,000 new homes per year in order to build. You can see that it's never met this target. Uh, going back to 2008, it's been woefully short. Now, as an aside, this graph shows some interesting detail of the types of new dwellings that are being added in the UK. The blue shows the number of new builds. Uh, the green shows the number of uh, change of use type of properties. Reds are the conversion. Uh, and that kind of thing but you can see uh, that change of use and conversions is adding something to the bottom line but the target is just never being met quite frankly so we've got supply demand imbalance we've got massive demand for homes and um, what a fall in interest will naturally mean is that the affordability of homes will increase as interest rates fall buyers of properties will be able to get better mortgage rates that will mean they will be able to borrow more and therefore they will be able to afford uh, more property for their money. Coupled with really good uh, wage data uh, showing that real wages are going up a little bit, that all kicks into house price affordability being better than just six months ago. Now, as soon as affordability improves a little bit as a result of a little drop in interest rates, then of course the supply demand imbalance that exists in the UK kicks into play and you start to see house prices nudge up a little bit. So it's for this reason that talk at the beginning of 2024 about property price falls during 2024 uh, now need to be relooked at and revised. And the reason why is this unexpected and uh, quite dramatic cut in the inflation, which means that the Bank of England has much more room for interest rate movements. So if you're liking this video, then let me know by smashing that like button, subscribe because we put out new content each and every week, and also tell me what you think in the comments below. So what does this mean for you guys as savvy property entrepreneurs and investors? Well, right now, for a few months, there's a window of opportunity. When you know the direction of travel, act now. If you look to secure good property deals right now, if you're exchanging contracts and completing in a few months' time, by that time, um, a lot of what I am saying will start to play out in the market. As always, it's all about making sure you're equipped with the knowledge uh, to take first mover advantage before the masses get to know about it. That's it for this video. Tell me what you think, think in the comments below and see you at this month's Baker Street Property Meet, Tuesday 30th of April. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.